After St. Louis, I was supposed to go home. Do you want to fight Becky? I'm like, wait, what? Uh. Trish pushing me through the table. I was like a little gnarly. <laughs> to honor the women that weren't there to see how far the women had progressed. The twist of faith on Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on those. Please be loud, like everywhere. Everyone's reaction gave me that much more confidence to know that I can go out there and do this. Welcome everyone to Bring the Bell. This is DS and Oh my god, I'm so extremely excited for this! Extremely, extremely. excited! <laughs> this is where we are right now. Yes! Right? We are here with the formal WWE Women's Champion, Hall of Famer, and a legend. Lead us here on Ring the Bell! Woo! This is when you guys sing my entrance music. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Right before your big match. You know, it's rare. I've been I've been very scouted. Everyone wants a piece, but you know, only give it to uh, ring the bell. We got the special relationship. Yes. <laughs> so I think this is a perfect time for us to go over your legendary career before your big match against Becky Lynch. I think this is a good idea too, because I need to just remind myself who I am. Right, exactly. I need to go in there. You gotta beat your opponent in your mind. And then the physical will just follow. We're gonna count down top five fan voted okay. best Lita moment. Nice. Number one. The first moment is. You versus Stephanie McMahon, the main event for a WWF Women's Championship match. Okay, so this was definitely one of those things that I had heard this was the plan, but I was like, it's probably not the plan. It's probably not the plan because I have to just prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Okay. So I was like, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's probably not the plan. It's probably not the plan. And then even when we got out there, I was like, oh, it might be happening. And then, <laughs> and so I just remember, yeah, I still felt because I was so new at the time, even though it was my match and I was in the middle of the ring, I was like, stay out of the way of all the big stars out there. <laughs> oh, I just had a flashback. Yes. So the Hardys came in and they were like, okay, we'll like grab lead out and celebrate at the mm -hmm. top of the ramp. But but like they also were very new at that time <laughs> and wanted to stay out of the way of the big stars. Right. And they couldn't get the shot of me mm -hmm. celebrating in the ring with the title oh. because they, they were like, pull her out of the ring and get her up the ramp, you got it. Pull her out of the ring and get her up the ramp, you got it. And they were like, bup, bup, bup. And so we, this is my we, moment. Yeah, we had to have a big celebration the next night, and I had to make sure I got my hand up there, the title, all that. I mean, your popularity skyrocketed. You were the women's champion with the Hardy Boys, so popular. And one evidence of that is with all the girls and gays wearing that whale tail, thongs up. All the students from Catholic school got in trouble because yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it your idea? Yeah, it was. It was my idea. I actually just had had a thong on, and I bought a new outfit. Actually, the red foil outfit that's in one of my 8x10s, like when I was with S.A. Rios still. And, and it was a low ride, and so I just underwear naturally stuck out. So I will say... It was my idea combined with it was Edge and I, like and so we had gone shopping and he was like oh let me let me see and so I came out and I was like well I mean like not with this but he's like or with that and I was like oh, all right Whoa. and so that had just kind of stuck out I was still with S A Rios at the time but I was like well maybe if I change my look I have an extra accessory to match wow wow my I mean you know what's really funny is that when I look at you fashion queen's not the first word I think of no but even then it kind of is I, you are even to this day your looks are always talked about both of your Rumble appearances with the messages that you seated in. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. When you know, when you're full time, you have the next week. Like mm -hmm. if your outfit didn't look quite right, you can take a risk. A la Becky at Raw last week. Um, <laughs> You can take a risk, and it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you're like, I'll, I'll like wear something the next week. But when, when I'm only coming out for a short time, it's like, I want to make it count. Right. So it was really important for me on the first Rumble to honor the women yeah. that that weren't there to see mm -hmm. how far the women had progressed. Luna and China and people that aren't here to see that this is happening and, and like what they did. It's just so cool. And then this time, I just wanted to highlight some issues that were important to me. Right. So I had a patch on my gear that said, end gun violence. I had a patch that said, no human is illegal. Mm -hmm. And then I had a trans uh, rights patch right. on there with the rainbow flag around it. Let's move to the second moment. And it is...
your match against China. Oh yeah. For the women's championship. This was her last match in mm-hmm. WWE. Oh, I just remember China when when they had introduced her working with women. Of course, she was not happy about that. She's like, "What? I kick the guys asses, you know?" <laughs> and then Ivory was a bit of the segue into me. And we were close. Right. So she was like, "All right, well, I want to just keep keep kicking guys asses, but if I am going to play with the women, I'm glad it glad it's you." And so we had a three pay-per-view program that was slated. Oh, wow, So wow. this match, we wanted to intentionally mm-hmm. just give a taste and have it be entertaining enough to make people want to see more. But I was also given advice separately that didn't, you know, not, not in relation to this match. Don't hold back because you might not get another opportunity. So it's oh. like make the most of every opportunity you have, like whatever that is, a job interview, a, a relationship, like whatever it, it is, like make the most of the opportunity because you your opportunities, you don't know when you're going to get them. Right. You might be walking out of gorilla position after the Royal Rumble 2022 and asked if you want to fight Becky. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. So <laughs> while you might want more time to train, you will make the most of your opportunity. It seems like China has so much respect for you whenever there's interviews. Why do you think that is? I think at that time they they were starting to hire, like we had Deborah, we had Terry Runnels in the locker room. We had, I mean, Trish had, she, while she had started to train when she got uh, on board, she was still, she like, was hired for being a fitness model. And so I think that China, from having gone to Killer Kowalski's school and come up through like the hard way, yeah. basically, I think there was a little bit of an instant respect knowing that I'd come up through the Indies. I don't want it to be taken, I'm not taken seriously after all the hard work I really have put in. Let's move to a third moment, and it is. Your explosive return. Right. Saving Trish Stratus, the whole arena was just out of control. Bam. Yes. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> was yeah. that, did you plan that? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> it was, I think there, I forget her name, but there was like a soccer player that a woman, a woman's soccer player that, that did that. Okay. And that it was like, so that was like the first time I did it. It was like a, a nod to her because she was just doing it not in a sexual way, but like in a firing, yeah. firing up way. Right, and right. I was like, oh, I like that where the sexuality could be secondary and it's the, the fire is primary. Yeah. What was it like to be back in that time coming back from the injury? Oh, I just, I felt ready. Um, they had told me a year and that was actually 15 months later. You know, when everybody in WWE especially is like, they're like, oh, you tell me six months, I'm coming back in four. You tell me a year, I'm coming back in 10 months. And a year was coming up and I was like, I'm not feeling ready. And, and it was like, I wanted, I was trying to convince myself I was ready and I was like, nope. Just tell them I'm not. I'm like, I'm not ready. I mean, I don't I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be worried. Someone's going to hit me from behind. And so I just told them I said, I need more time. And I'm so glad I took that because I was so ready. Right. And so I could feel like 100 percent stoked as opposed to like 70 percent stoked. But also, <laughs> I hope you don't hurt me. You know, I was right, just right. like, that's behind me. I feel healed up. I feel ready to do this. This year, you had your first ever historic women's cage match. I mean, you had so many extreme matches and spots all the way from the chair shot from Stone cold from Trish pushing you down the left. There's so many ivory match. You were bleeding like hell. Uh For you, what's one moment that's like, ooh, that was extreme. Oh, man. Yeah, you just you just did a lot of them. Um, I really loved the mania where it was Spike Dudley, Rhino and me just to have just I always took pride in being the only female at that time mixing it up with the dudes in the TLC match. Yeah, I remember just like cracking Spike with the chair and then getting 3 d by the Dudleys. But yeah, I, I remember Trish pushing me through the table. I was like a little gnarly. Um, Let's go to number four. And how can we not talk about this? iconic match. Main event of Raw, Trish versus Lita. One of the most iconic women's matches in the history of wrestling. Yeah, who knew? Like, we didn't. We didn't know that all these years later, it would 
be regarded as such a benchmark on the ladder of, like, on, as a rung on that on the evolution, right. but it, it holds up. It does. This match, WWE loves to talk about it. Everybody loves talking about it. But the thing is, this match is so iconic. I think we often forget about the storyline that led up to this, which was also very wild. Mm -hmm. uh, the pregnancy and miscarriage. And that was peak of your career. Was there a reason that you took a role that was out of action? Yeah, that was a bummer. It was like, I, I was just told that's what I was doing. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, here we see the... Um, like the fallout because okay. I'm like let me at her like put me in the ring so like to be able to get back in right, the ring and of right. course Trisha had been needling me the whole time right. in anticipation of us right. having a feud but yeah it was interesting to be like not injured and, and be in a storyline um, that took me out of the ring. This is a very famous rumor. No original source. Nobody confirmed it. But apparently you and Trish were supposed to have a ladder match at WrestleMania 21. Are there any legs to that rumor? So I hear lots of these rumors and I have no idea because... <laughs> so because of the whole like prepare for the worst and hope for the best thing, I would not like give anything to any rumors because I'm like everything changes like don't get stoked on some ladder match like um because it would be more devastating mm -hmm. if I was just like going to bed at night dreaming about being in a ladder match and then they're just <laughs> like man sorry it's a brown panties match you know so <laughs> I was like uh, so I I don't know okay okay before we move to the last moment I want to touch upon the underrated era the heel era because my favorite personal moment this segment where it's almost like a pipe bomb yeah. Yeah. Where you're telling everyone those are the pants that I wore in the rumble, by the way, reworked. Oh, oh I did not know that. <laughs> Were you spilling your heart? Yeah. Forgetting who I am and what I've done. You're teaching all the crowd. They're being all distracted by all these scandals, which is always unfair to the women, by the way. That they're forgetting that you revolutionized women's division. Yeah, it was such a um ever since the the Matt Adam um, love triangle, it right. just became such a focus and everything I did, no matter how good it was in the ring, was a a like deep, like took deep second place. Mm -hmm. And it was also one of those like, I knew I was gonna be out in a couple weeks. So I was like, well, what are they gonna do? Let's move to the last moment. And it is. Yeah, what? Me and you at Elimination Chamber? <laughs> Your return. You swerved everyone by coming out right after Ronda Rousey, challenging Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship match. How was that like? And how much time did you have to prepare for everything? So Renee Young mm -hmm. lives in Cincinnati. Okay. These are her clothes because that is how little time I had to what? prepare. They're like, can you come? So yeah, after St. Louis, I was supposed to go home. And on Sunday, I, I drove okay. to Cincinnati and swung by Renee's house and I'm like, girl, what can I wear? Yeah. Wait, I got chills. What? Really? Yeah. That when like J Johnny Ace asked me, he's like, do you want to fight Becky? I'm like, wait, what? Like, you know that. You know that I do. You know that she does. And he's like, oh my God. how about in like two weeks? And I was like, ah. Uh. No, but yes, you know, like no, only because I want like to trade and to have it go. But yeah, it's like seize the moment, like take the opportunity when it's there. Mm -hmm. It's sorted all out in the wash. I mean, you talked to me a little bit about your relationship with Becky, so I, I, I have more context. But why does this match mean so much to you? Yeah, I think this match is a, a true generational clashing match because we are very kindred spirits. She had was like she's like lives like a pirate, you know, kind of took a very meandering journey to get to her spot in the WWE. Same thing. So we're like kind of cut from the same cloth. I saw a lot of her in me as she was starting, like as I first just met yeah, her. Yeah. And then to be at home and watch her catch fire, right. I was like, girl, like not only do I did I know she ha had it, mm -hmm. but also I was like, let me in there. <laughs> you know, some people are saying they also want to see you and Charlotte. Oh, absolutely. So she is more to me like, Trish. Yeah. Oh, right. Like mm -hmm. very like dedicated in this way that she's like regimented and like, you know, and Charlotte was supposed to succeed. Mm, right. Like right. Trish was supposed to succeed. Right. They both not only do the work, but mm -hmm. like the extra credit work. Right, right, like right, right. they're just like eat, sleep, train, like 24 <laughs> seven. Right? right. But Becky was more the like 
she wasn't supposed to make it. Mm -hmm. She was like bartending in New York and like doing, mm -hmm. you know, and like doing, like had like a wild journey to get to where she was. Right. Stars just align. She sees the opportunity. And that's more how I see my journey. I was Got like, it. I'm some like kid that like yeah. wasn't supposed to be me. Mm -hmm. Well, just I was going to always be me, but nobody else was <laughs> supposed to know that. You know? She had your question. What did you think of the twist of fate on Charlotte? Yeah, she's very tall, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We can work on those. <laughs> the big question I have about this Becky match is you were known as the unproblematic queen online, <laughs> along with Eve Torres. Okay. Uh, because you're so knowledgeable and progressive when it comes to cultural matters, political matters, social matters. Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. it's been controversial for a while. Yeah. I, I'm sure you thought a lot about it to yeah. performing there. What's your mindset going in there performing in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. So I will say I was outspoken on the early relationship right. between WWE and, and Saudi. WWE was over Saudi Arabia. Women didn't get to go along. What do you think about that? I do feel it's a direct conflict of interest to the fact that they say that they would like to push forward women and their roles and their representation in the industry. Oh, they say they want women to wrestle mm -hmm. over there, but like, I don't know if I believe it. There's no women on this card. Right. There's women on the card. Yeah. And I've talked to the women personally that have been over there and they're like, it's unbelievable. Mm. There are women crying never thinking they would get to see two women be so strong in the ring. They're like, it's really powerful. You're going to enjoy that. And oh, so, sure, do they have a long way to go? Do we as a society have a long way to go? Right. Absolutely. But you've got to um, take the opportunities when they're there. Right, right. No, I, I also see from the first show to the last show, two women's matches, one of them stole the entire show. And they also had a segment with the women of Saudi Arabia, yeah. and that was very empowering. So I, I'm seeing visible change from WWE. It really is. You yeah. know, if so I don't know if that was mm -hmm. the plan, but it is working. Right. So it is encouraging to see right. that. And I am personally very excited about this match because it's you who inspired decades of women to be themselves. You're going there to perform at Saudi Arabia. So for me, that's why it's so exciting. Yeah, it, it really does. So Rumble always has a lot of events that can be full circle, right? right? Like you, you bring people full circle. But just this whole chapter right mm -hmm. now is very full circle like not only with with becky and being in the locker room yeah. these past few raws like hanging out with these women that saw me right. on television when they decided to wrestle but then also to all these years later not only still be paying that forward but in two ways like not only these women in saudi arabia that never thought they would see t two women wrestle but to go okay you don't have to be a young athlete in your right. 20s to, to win the title that. and that you can be a mom or you can be having your second career you can send your kids off to school and you can still achieve your goals and persevere and do whatever you thought was unthinkable so I love that part of it too like right. these women that grew up with me right. that I'm like no you still can <laughs> I love so that. I love I, that. yeah so I think about I think about them mm -hmm. like I think about them and their children like for this match. Thank you so much for counting down. Top five moment with us. I got so many chills during this interview. Can you tell the fans that really waited more than 15 years to see you have that good last match? Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm kicking ass. I'm going to do everything I can. But second of all, like not only like the support yeah. of the fans is like everything. I will tell you, I was apprehensive when they said they were going to announce the people in the rumble prior but everyone's reaction gave me that much more confidence so hearing like please be loud like everywhere be loud online like just like bother me bombard me because each like comment it gives me like a tiny bit more confidence to know that i can go out there and do this <laughs> <laughs>